Welcome back to another video. So till now what we've seen is that in Java we can declare variables of a specific type. Say for example here we've taken x and we can store a specific value in them. So what this sentence basically means is that I've created a box, I've named it x and I've stored an integer type value. I've stored 9 in the box. So say I want to store another value in the box, another value in the variable. I want to store the number 8. So what basically happens here is that the previous value, it's going to be replaced by our new value. So we can't store multiple values in this concept. And in order to fix this problem, we have our new concept, the topic of today's video, array. So, all right, here we go. So an array is basically a data structure that allows us to store multiple values, basically a group of values. It has four main properties. Uh, array has a name, a type, a length and index. So we're going to get to that one later. The syntax for declaring an array in Java is as follows. We're going to start off with the type. So here we're going to have an array of type int or uh, everything we store in the array is going to be basically an integer. Next we have our array name. Then we're going to have square brackets, which means basically we're declaring an array. Then new and then we're going to write the type again. And here's the main thing, the main piece of concept here. This is our array length. So here written number 10. It basically means that our array is going to be able to store 10 different integers. So whenever we declare an array, we basically create a series of boxes like so. So here we have um, an array called R, as we've written R here. This array can store every integer, all integers. And there are a total of 10 boxes from 1 to 10 here because our array length is 10. Now, the numbers that you can see here from 0 to 9, these are called the indexes of an array. So, an index is basically the position of a box in an array, all right? So, this first box, it has an index of 0. Why 0? Because, you know, convention. Uh, every single array starts, with, um, starts from index 0. And it's going to continue up until the array's length. So, so since it starts from zero, it's going to continue until, you know, number nine, since there are 10 boxes. So, yeah, the maximum index of an array, it's going to be its length, which is 10 minus one. So we get nine. So an array of length 10 is going to have indexes from zero to nine. All right, then. So let's move on. We're now going to be taking a look at how to take inputs into an array all right so there are basically three ways with which you can with which you can take inputs into an array the first way is you know taking a direct input say i want to take an input into index four what this uh, line of code basically means that in our array called r uh, we're going to store the number 9 in index 4. So R of 4 means the contents of index 4 in the array called R. So we're going to store 9 there. All right. So in this way, we can, you know, separately store values in an array into each box. So the standard way of taking input, of taking multiple inputs into an array is, as you can guess, a for loop. So I'm just going to start my for loop here. You know, the syntax is conventional. We've discussed it before. So I'm going to start from index 0. And I'm going to loop until array.length minus 1. Um, what, this, what this line of code, this piece of code returns, array.length, is the length of our array. So array.length basically means the number 10 here, since we have, you know, an array of 10 boxes. So it's going to start from 0. And it's going to continue until array.length minus 1, which means 9. And then we have our i++. And then we're just going to take our input. So r of i is equal to 
str.nextint. So I'm going to be using the, you know, the scanner library to take an integer input here. So my scanner library is basically a CR here. Okay, so when i is equal to zero, we're going to have r of zero is equal to str.nextInt. So what this basically does, it takes an input into the first index of the array. All right, say that's, for example, five. And then i is going to become one, and I want to take another input and say it's three. It's going to continue until we reach the end of our array. The third way we can take an input into an array is as follows. So I'm going to take another array of type int and it's going to be called b. Now the difference between this declaration and the previous ones is that you'll notice that I haven't written any value in the place for length. See? So the place here, the bracket here, it's empty. Because what this line of code basically does is that it creates an array called b of type int and it stores five values, one, three, four, five, eight, into the array. And since we have five values, the array is automatically going to have a length of five. And from index 0 to 4, we're going to have the values here as follows. All right, so in this case, we don't even need to take separate inputs. The inputs are already taken for us. So if we don't have this line of code here, all we have is, you know, our array here. And we're going to have to take an input through our for loop. All right, so that was basically it. Now we're going to, let's solve a problem. So we're going to take 10 numbers as input. And we're going to find the maximum and the average of those numbers. So take 10 integers as input into an array and find the maximum and the average of those numbers. All right, then. So let's move on to our code. Here I've, you know, I've written my basic Java syntax. And I've taken three variables, uh, max for storing our maximum value. Then there's sum, which I've, um, you know, I've declared as zero. And then there's average, which I've also declared as zero. So I'm going to be using the scanner library again to take inputs. And this right here is our array declaration. All right. So an array called R of length 10 and type int. So let's start off by taking our inputs. So the same thing as we discussed before, I'm going to start from i equal to zero, I'm going to loop until r dot length minus one. I could have basically just written i is less than r dot length here, and then you wouldn't have needed the minus one. So same thing. There we go. And yeah, we're going to take the input here. So r of i is equal to scr dot next int all right so 10 inputs we've taken them here now to find the maximum i'm going to you know i'm going to consider that the first input into my array the input that i've taken in index one is basically my maximum so let my maximum that i've declared here equal to our first input which is in array of zero all right and then I'm also going to, con going to consider my sum is also array of zero. We're going to understand why in a minute. So, all right, up to now, I hope you've understood. I've taken values, taken an input, and my maximum is the first box in the array, the first index in the array. And sum, I've also, you know, added the first, contents of the first box into the sum variable so we're going to loop again and this time we're going to start from the second index in the array which is you know i equal to one and i'm going to consider every single you know every single input from index one 
to the last uh, index, which is 9. I'm going to compare it to my maximum uh, variable. And if the contents of that index is greater than maximum, we're going to be, you know, replacing the value stored in maximum. So it's going to be simple when I write it. If array of i, which means the contents of a specific index, is greater than the maximum that I have right now, which means array of 0, then maximum is going to be basically equal to array of i. So it's an easy concept. Hopefully you've already done this before. And what we're going to do is just we're going to sum, which means add the contents of every single index and store it in the variable sum. Sum equal to sum plus array of i. All right. So there we go. So the work in our loop is done. We already have our maximum. Now let's calculate the average. So average is basically equal to sum divided by 10 since we have an array length of 10 and let's print them all out so system dot out dot print lawn the maximum number is and then we're just gonna plus our max then we're gonna do the same thing again for average the average value plus average all right then so we've completed our code now let's let's run Okay, so I'm going to be taking my inputs now. So the first number is 2, 4, 3, 99. That's supposed to be our maximum. Next, I'm going to be taking 1. And yep, I realize that you're unable to see the input. So there we go. And I'm going to be taking 4, 5, 6, 3, 2, there. So the maximum number is 99 and our average value is 12. And we're done with today's video. So in the next videos, we're going to be discussing more problems and arrays. So stay tuned, guys. Thank you.